just to take a, a minute and put in uh, some of the clear part of the sky. I mean, after all, I mean, really, it's the it's the light of the sky that gives the Earth its meaning. And with that, um, all the experiences of the painter. Put some of the sunlight on uh, the fog, just so you don't think this whole painting's going to be blue and gray. Uh, but in the beginning, when you're searching, I mean, you have, you know, in your mind an idea of what you want to do, but when you're actually into the picture. Um, it's a it's a wonderful way of unifying the design uh, in the beginning because it it takes the uh, it gives you that depth and it composes the picture and if this canvas were white it would be very very difficult to get a sense of the values on it so you know by having this prepared canvas and a prepared palette and lots of years of studying and discouraging wiped off canvases and, um, it all comes into play thing that you know, Arthur taught me mostly was uh, kept talking about this big idea and um, you know, it, you know, he really uh, he taught me to see the rainbow every single part of the day and with that uh, it's hard to explain it quickly but with that in mind If you want to bring your canvas to life, you have to understand the spectrum and the prism that we look at and we see every single day. And the idea of the atmosphere around the Earth and acting like a gigantic raindrop and with this spectrum breaking through that and our understanding of the most yellow in the foreground and the most violet in the distance, because that's just the way the spectrum breaks down. 
um, and if you have these tools to work with and a palette that was given to me by him and was given to him by his teacher, who knows where it came from. But you know, over the centuries of fine painters, they're the ones that we really admire the most, they all had the same idea. And that was that big idea of bringing the form and the reality of what we see every single day to the canvas. So as I continue with the, uh, the shadow in the front, uh, it becomes more and more colorful. things we talk about composing pictures is the, the elliptical curves that take you into the landscape and when you're standing outside uh, you know unless somebody points it out to you you really don't see it painting the model on a model stand you look for those elliptical curves that either tie the light and the shadow together or the landscape as well and in this case uh, quite a bit so stay about the same in the sunlight. In other words, the, uh, the darkness of the sunlight is going to be about the same from here to here. But it's the shadows that get lighter as you go all the way back to the neutralization point where there's no difference between light and shadow. It just becomes that 
blue gray hills. Some of the rock faces. So when we talk about light effect, the entire light effect from our highest light to our darkest accent. Most of the painting is in the middle range of values and color. We're not at the extremes until the end. But in the early stages, you could see that this was the shadow of the trees. And then you put that light plane on it. And then uh, something that we're familiar with in the class, and if you're not, uh, it's a term that we call the half tone, which is the softening of that sunlight into the shadow. And that starts to give the object form, so it starts to turn. Right? And you need those three planes or those three values to make something solid. And it would look funny to have something that bright way in the distance. Sometimes you see the effects in this. You want to do it so bad. Um, it, it's, but you've got to keep trying. And then that's the other thing, is, is that you just don't ever stop. You just always keep painting. What's in here without some sheep?